Alula and its surrounding area is in one of the oldest inhabited parts of the Middle East. Stone Age man lived here some 50 to 60,000 years ago. The area is strewn with caves once used as sites of worship or burial or, when necessary, for defensive purposes. The way they're laid out would allow a handful of men to resist the attack of an army. One example is the inaccessible cave known as the fortress. Another enormous cave called the castle could hold up to 1,200 people. One of these caves, originally a place of burial, houses traces of the first Christian settlements dating back to before Ma'alula was developed outside the caves. A cross and a bird, possibly a pelican, the symbol of Jesus. A vandalized carving of the Virgin and Child. A peacock that symbolizes immortality. A Greek inscription that refers to Christ's victory over the pagans and a symbol of the Trinity. Apart from the name, additional evidence of the growth of the Aramean community in Malula can be found in local traditions and in the day-to-day -day conversation of its current inhabitants. <laughs> In the course of the centuries, the Aramaic language was divided into various dialects, Nabataean, Pomerine, Mandean and Syriac, in addition to the dialect spoken in Jubaddin and Ma'alula in the Kalamun Mountains. In the highest part of the village is a typical Malula house. It's the home of a 105-year-old woman, a shrine for the memories, emotions, and illusions that have filled her long life. She talks about them in Aramaic, the only language she knows, and one of the few things that have never changed for her. After the Emperor Constantine's Edict of Milan in 313 A.D., communities like Malula emerged from the safety of the caves and gained importance as centers of Christianity. Indeed, some Christians felt encouraged to destroy pagan temples or transform them into churches. The Monastery of St. Sergius above Malula is an extraordinary example of this kind of transformation. The doorway is so low that non-Christians and Christians alike are obliged to bow to enter what is considered to be one of the oldest churches, not only in Syria, but in the entire world. The Lord's Prayer recited in Aramaic by this girl is a familiar sound for these ancient stones and the centuries-old woodwork. Probably built around the year 325, the year of the Nicene Council, 
the church is a visual representation of the transition from ancient paganism to the Christian revolution. That transition is physically embodied in some of the wooden beams that scientific tests have shown are over 2,000 years old. And by a pagan altar with a hole through which sacrificial blood would drip to be collected in jars. This means that parts of the building date back to before Christ. For some people, the use of pagan elements in a Christian church might be considered sacrilegious. But to believers free of prejudice, it's a sign of the deep change that occurred in the hearts of men with the advent of Christ. Legend tells of a Christian girl called Tekla, whose father, a pagan and perhaps a king, wanted to marry her off to a pagan officer. While trying to escape from her father's soldiers, Tekla found her path blocked by a high rock face. The girl prayed to the Lord to give her an escape route. Suddenly, the rock face split open to reveal a passage that became known as St. Tekla's Gorge. The gorge became the girl's home, and after her martyrdom, St. Tekla was buried here. Every day, pilgrims from all over Syria and from other countries visit the monastery sanctuary of St. Tekla in Malula that houses the saint's tomb and relics. Saidnaya is another Syrian town that, before the arrival of the Greeks and Arabs, was inhabited only by people of Aramean descent. The Aramaic heritage is reflected by the town's ancient name, Danuba. Like Malula, evidence of prehistoric Saidnaya lies in caves where pre-Stone Age objects have been discovered. The town's recorded history began in the indestructible monuments erected by the Greeks during their 400-year occupation. The Christian tradition is evident in the many local churches and monasteries, the most important of which is dedicated to Our Lady of Saidnaya. Built 1,500 years ago, it was known as the Fort due to its impregnable defensive position. This monastery sanctuary is visited daily by tourists and pilgrims of different faiths, including Muslims. The monastery and sanctuary are looked after by nuns of the Greek Orthodox Patriarchate of Antioch, to whom Christians of the Byzantine Church who speak Arabic answer. The nuns are also responsible for restoring antique icons and safeguarding a veritable treasure trove of ancient manuscripts. Although these are now in Arabic, in the Middle Ages, Saidnaya was an important center for the copying of Syriac manuscripts. These are only some of the books from the monastery's original library. Many more have been burned, stolen, or destroyed by the ravages of time. In the reliquary, the icon of the Blessed Virgin, called Shagura in Aramaic,